So I was with um, I was with my friend yesterday, and I said I was interviewing Guy Ritchie today, and they said, oh, what, what's what's he done? And I said, oh, he's directed Aladdin. And they went, really? And I realised that that was my initial reaction when I first heard that you'd done this. It felt like a bit of a surprise that you'd sort of taken on this project. I was wondering if that was partly what compelled you to do this. It feels like quite a, a departure for you. It feels like just trying something a bit different, which I guess as a director is always quite an exciting, exciting thing to do. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm a father of five. So most of my entertainment is family movies. And it was a refreshing change to embark upon something that the whole family could watch. So that was exciting. Uh, I like the juxtaposition of taking something that was sort of Disney princess-esque. Uh, and then the clue was in the title of Aladdin. So you've got Boy from the Street, yet you've got quite a lot of that going on and a a typical Disney princess. So how you gonna fuse those two worlds together that feels like it's fresh and it's new and at the same time not tread on the nostalgia of of what I imagine you and I like when growing up. So it has to be fresh enough, yet loyal to the uh, DNA of our original experience. Mm -hmm. When you say, say you're sort of sitting down before the family to watch this, I'm sure it will be such a great experience. Are you looking forward to one day sitting down when everyone's sort of old enough to sit down and watch Lockstock and Snatch and stuff? Is that something you're quite excited about showing your kids one day? Uh, yeah, it's funny. I, I don't revisit my films particularly unless they happen to be on telly. So it's Snatch or Rock and Roller seems to be on telly sort of quite a lot. So, uh, and I, I'm saying previously that I've got the mind of a goldfish, so I can never remember the films that I've done, The Brain of a Goldfish. So when, whenever I end up seeing these things, I go, oh, I did that. <laughs> uh, and it's all, I ne can never remember how my films end. Um, and I'm always surprised when I go, I cannot remember that that experience happened. But obviously, it's got to be a fun experience to uh, watch your movies with your, with your family. And I just wanted uh, just to talk quickly about Will Smith, who's just brilliant uh, in, in the role of the genie. I mean, he's a really great dramatic actor. I mean, I was watching uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air the other day, and there's this great scene where he sort of realises that his um, his dad doesn't want any, any part of his life, and it's, one, it's such an emotional sort of piece of acting. And I was thinking, in this, the genie's quite an inherently sad character, isn't it? You really allow uh, Will Smith not to just be kind of over the top and quite sort of flamboyant, but at the same time, there's that kind of undercurrent in this, which allows him to really show off his dramatic side. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, again, in the day, DNA of, of the genie, there is uh, a pathos to his character anyway. It's, it's kind of a sad character. He has all the power of the universe, but the only thing he doesn't have is freedom. Uh, and so it's inherent within the character. But what we try to give him was a sense of vanity as well, to sort of make him a bit more human. Um, it's, a, it's a hell of a role, you know, and you've got to somehow avoid stepping on the smoky toes of... Robin Williams who came before. So you've got to have a, a big enough genie without occupying a space that's already been occupied. And just finally, I was just wondering, so I mean, obviously whenever you get these kind of re remakes of, of, of movies in sort of Disney, you always wonder where do they fit in a kind of modern world and kind of how, are they relevant to today? And you think, I mean, this is a tale of, of a quite a nefarious kind of tyrant who wants to, to, to take over a kind of kingdom and suppress his people with the kind of current politics going on in the world. It actually feels like there's something quite pertinent about this, this tale being told right now. Yeah, I mean, arguably it's a parable anyway, uh, Aladdin. It's... Uh, the, the, the story is an ongoing story, right? And that story has is, is never changed in the sense that it's a man trying to accept that he's enough without looking for the affirmation of others to tell him he's enough. So that component, which is really what the story is about, is as pertinent today as it, as, as it ever was. I mean, that's the only sort of ongoing battle that man has with himself. So in that respect, it's, uh, it's pertinent. I mean, man just is just repeating the same things that he's done for thousands of years just wearing different clothes brilliant well thanks so much for your time so much appreciate it ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys huh hey you guys, is yeah. that from the goonies it is indeed, yeah. nice hey you guys.